So in the previous videos, we learned how to take two different functions and compose them together to create a new function. This was kind of the flowchart idea for what we were doing. And then we did some examples with these two machines where f of x is x squared minus 4x and g of x is 5 minus 2x. And then we even saw that, it might seem a little bit strange, but there's no reason you can't compose a function like g with itself. g of g of x is a thing, as is f of f of x. And we're not limited just to two functions. If we felt like composing together more than two functions, you could certainly do that. And the good news is you don't have to learn anything new to do that. It follows in almost the exact same way as what we did above. Let me show you how. In this first example here, we're trying to figure out f of g of f of x. If you felt the need, you could make a big flow chart with kind of three different machines, one feeding into the next, into the next, to define this new huge function. But it might be easier to just rewrite this function in this more useful format where we sort of have nested machines. How would you do that? Well, note that if you read these left to right, we see an f and then a g and then an f and then an x. So if we're nesting functions, we're first gonna write an f for this f and then a g for this g and then another f for this f and then finally my x. This looks really complicated, but it's not as bad as you'd think. The same methods we did in the previous video are gonna work. Just work from the inside out. On the inside of this nesting of machines, I see f of x written. Up here in this red box, it says that f of x is the same as x squared minus 4x. So this innermost f of x can be rewritten as x squared minus 4x. Everything else stays the same. I haven't touched this g nor this outermost f. All I've done is I've changed the inner f of x into x squared minus 4x. Now what you wanna do is stare at kind of the blue layer. In the blue layer, the innermost function now is asking me to take x squared minus 4x and put it into this machine g, which is something that I can do because the machine g is defined right up here. Because g of x is five minus two x, g of x squared minus 4x would be five minus two times x squared minus 4x. Copying what I see here, changing all the x's into x squared minus 4x. And since g of x squared minus 4x is the same as five minus two times x squared minus 4x, I can replace this g of x squared minus 4x with five minus two times x squared minus 4x. So I'd still have this outermost f here, but I can kind of replace the blue layer with five minus two times x squared minus four x, exactly what I see written up here. It's getting pretty ugly, it's hard to look at, but the good news is we're really close to done. All we have written here is a function f with an input, a really strange input, an ugly looking input, but we're at the point where we can use any input we want, it doesn't matter. The function f of x is defined up here. The output for this function is something squared minus four times something. That something is denoted with an x up in this blueprint, but we don't want it to be an x down here because our input is no longer the x, it's this whole mess in blue. But if I take this whole mess in blue and I copy it inside these two parentheses, I'll have an expression that represents f of g of f of x. This answer could be simplified if you feel the need to simplify, but I don't. My point here is not to show you some simplification methods, it's to explain function composition and show how you're not just limited to having kind of two layers of composition going on. There's no reason you can't have three layers of composition or even more. Let's look at another example. What about f of g of f of five? If you see this and immediately can think of two different ways that you'd solve this question, much like there were two different ways that we could solve this question, g of g of two above, that's great. The first option would be to just rewrite this thing, rewrite it in a more useful format, f of g of f of five. Rewrite the same letters that you see here, just with nested parentheses, and then work from the inside out. Figure out what is f of five. Leave this f and this g completely alone. Just work on the inside here and find out what f of five is. If it helps, you can do this off to the side. f of five, I would figure out by copying f of x here, except changing all the x's into fives. So I'd have five squared minus four times five. I'd have 25 minus 20. I guess when I put five into this machine, five would come out. So I can replace this f of five with the number five. Stare at what we have left. What we have left here looks a lot like what we started out with in examples up above. We have two layers of nested functions with a number as the input on the inner layer. The way we solve those will be the exact same as the way we solve these. First, we'll figure out g of five. Because I have a rule for g of x, figuring out g of five is really easy. 
All I gotta do is copy this rule, except change all the x's into fives. So I'd have five minus two times five. Five minus 10, that sounds like negative five. What would come out of this machine g if I put five into it would be negative five. So I can replace this g of five with this negative five. So instead of f of g of five, I have f of negative five. f of negative five, I can figure that out. All I gotta do is copy the rule for f of x, except change all the x's into negative fives. I'll do it off to the side here just for the sake of consistency, but there's no reason you couldn't do it right over here. f of negative five would be negative five squared minus four times negative five. So negative five squared is positive 25, and negative four times negative five is positive 20. When you put negative five into this f machine, what comes out is 45. Therefore, the output here is 45. So if I wanna figure out what will come out of this crazy composite machine when I put five in, the answer would be 45. And while I'm not gonna actually show you it, it's worth pointing out that you could also just plug fives in for all the different x's that we see up here. Wait, why would that work? Why would that be the same? Because what we did up in part A here is we found a rule for this machine, f of g of f. And all this is asking us is to take five and put it into that very same machine. So since we have a rule for the machine to figure out what comes out when we put five in, we just copy the rule and change all the x's into fives. If you changed all these x's into fives and simplified, you should get this exact same answer of 45 here. To try to make this as complicated as possible, I'm gonna do a composite of three different functions, but instead of having both f's and g's, I'm just gonna use g's. What would happen if we composed together g with itself three different times? Well, g of x is written above is five minus two x, so to figure out g of g of g of x, all we do is rewrite this in a more useful form and then work from the inside out. This innermost g of x is the same as five minus two x, so I can rewrite this expression as g of g of five minus two x. What is this asking me to do? It's asking me to figure out g of something and that something I can figure out. g of five minus two x, this is taking the machine g and putting five minus two x into it. So it's copying exactly what I see here, except changing all the x's into five minus two x's. So I'd have five minus two times something, and that something would be this input, five minus two x. You could simplify this if you want, and that might make it less confusing, but I'm gonna purposefully not simplify it to really show you what's going on. In this last step to figure out this value, what I'm doing is I'm taking this machine g and I'm putting something into it. Oh yeah, what are you putting into it? This whole mess. So I'm gonna copy this machine up here where my output is five minus two times something. What I'm gonna do is replace this x because the input is no longer the letter x with the new input, all the stuff in these parentheses up here. Five minus two times five minus two x. G of G of G of X is five minus two times, five minus two times, five minus two X. And if that doesn't confuse you, I don't know what to tell you. I don't really know that it's necessary, but if you wanna test yourself, see if you could figure out G of G of G of X. See if you can do this four different times. One option for doing this would be very similar to what we did up in part C, just having one more layer, but kind of a clever way of doing this would be rewriting this as G of this mess. Maybe the color coordination will help. What we see in purple here is exactly what we evaluated in part C. It's what we already have an answer for. So really all part D is asking you to do is take this function, g of x written in red, and put inside of it this mess that I have in purple. If you stare at this and you're overwhelmed, that's totally understandable, but after a little while, if you can convince yourself that this is something you know how to do. You're taking some expression, admittedly a really ugly expression, and putting it into a machine. That's something you're really good at. All you gotta do is copy the blueprint for the machine, except change all the inputs, the letter X, into whatever you have inside the parentheses. So if I had to figure out G of G of G of G of X, I could first rewrite it this way, take advantage of some work that I did in previous problems, and then my final answer would be five minus two times something, that something being everything that I have written in these parentheses. Do I, the student, really need to know how to compose together four functions, especially when I'm using the same machine over and over again to try to make things as complicated as possible? Probably not. But if you can follow this, you're certainly an expert with algebraic function composition, which is supposed to be the idea of this chapter. And the point that I'm really trying to make is, even when we make things more complicated by adding in more and more functions, the methods 
the mechanics of what we're actually doing don't really change. It just gets a little bit uglier and a little bit harder to follow.